There we go. Okay, I think we're recording now. So um, let me just introduce myself first. My name's Emily Shaddock. I work for APA, the American Psychological Association. Um, I basically travel around to different schools, different universities, and do training and support for academic writers. So can I just get kind of a feel for, has everyone heard of academic writer? Have you used it? Feel fairly familiar? Maybe it's brand new? I was the one who haven't used it. Okay. First time hearing about it. First time hearing about it. Okay, so Academic Writer is, was created by APA, the American Psychological Association, and this is your online tool for writing and learning about APA style, so writing papers in APA style, um, but not just only APA style, there are also a lot of resources for um, the writing and research process in general. Um, so it's built off of these three centers. We have the Learn Center, the Reference Center, and the Write Center. So you have your resources for learning about writing and research and APA style in the Learn Center. And you also have the Reference Center, which I'll kind of walk you through each of these centers and just give you a nice overview of what is available here. Um, this is a resource that you have available through your library. Um, so let me show you how to actually get to it. So from your library page, um, let me go back one. So from your library homepage, if you just go to the databases tab there and you'll see the A to Z um, database list, it's going to be right up here at the top. Just look for academic writer and it says American Psychological <coughs> Association there in parentheses. So um, really, uh, you know that you're going to have the most authoritative information because we created APA style. Our APA style experts created Academic Writer. So very reliable APA content. Um, so once you find Academic Writer in here, you will just want to, um, you might have to log in with your school credentials if you're off campus. Um, if you're on campus, it should take you straight to Academic Writer. Okay. So then let me go back to the home page and show you just a few um, other things here just to kind of orient you with the home page here. So first of all, you do want to have your own account um, and you will want to encourage students to have an account as well. Um, this isn't just so that you have to remember another password. You know, I know we have so many these days, um, but really it's so that you can maintain your personal content. So you can create and add references and manage those, and you can create and save your papers. So you have to have your own account in, in order to save that personal content. So to create an account, um, pretty simple. You just want to come up to this welcome menu up here, and you can choose login. And then once you get to this page, you just want to choose create an account. Or if you already set one up, you can log in right here. So if I choose the create an account, can everyone see this okay up here? Okay. Um, you'll just have a simple form, pretty standard, um, first name, last name, email address. Um, you, don't, you do not have to use your school email address. Students don't either. It's not required. Um, a lot of instructors will ask their students to just so that they can easily you know, remember what they use to set up their account, um, but students can use any email address that they like. You'll choose a password, um, just agree to like the privacy terms and terms of service here, and then that's all you need to do to create your account. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, oops, let me go back here. Just closed out of it. Okay, but yeah, you do want to remember if students are having um, trouble, they do need to go log in through that library list um, to authenticate. They can't just come straight to Academic Writer from home. Um, it won't authenticate them. So they do need to log in through that library link. Okay, let me log in to my account here. <clears throat> OK, 
Okay, so now you'll see that next to that welcome up there, it's um, saying my name. So I know that I'm totally logged into my own account. So welcome, Emily. Um, also in that welcome menu up there, I'd like to point out this site help. So if you click on site help, this is going to direct you to some of our training resources that my team has created. So we were, I work with our customer engagement team. Um, we answer questions that our users have and we also do training sessions, whether they're in person like this or um, webinars, things like that. Um, but we've also created some training documents. So these, this is a collection of handouts. Um, these are for you to use, so please feel free to print them out distribute them to students. Um, there's some different topics covered here. So there's um, a handout here for like creating accounts. So if students were having issues creating accounts, you could refer them to that. Um, there's one that is just all about adding in text citations. And these are not teaching APA style, they're teaching how to use academic writer. So for example, this adding in text citations is going to walk you through um, with annotated um, screenshots here how to add in-text citations in Academic Writer. So those please feel free to print out and use. Um, also, I like to point out there is a troublesho troubleshooting section. So if students are having login problems, you can also refer them to that login help page there. Um, there's also some videos. So we have a YouTube channel here. So um, those are recordings are of different webinars that we've done. It covers similar content that I'm going to talk about today. So you can always um, refer students to the YouTube videos as well. And then the slide share are some PowerPoint presentations. Okay, um, other training materials that we have here. Um, there is a section up here, if you go to the training and support in the top right for webinars. <clears throat> so we present um, series, different series of webinars each month. Um, we have a webinar for that's specific to faculty and instructors, just an introduction, just kind of the basics. And then we have one that's a quick 30 minutes, um, just how to get in and start a paper. So those Anyone can join those. They're free and open to the public. So students can join those as well. Um, they can be pretty helpful, especially if you're brand new to Academic Writer. Okay, so th those are just some kind of training resources that we have available. I'm going to go back to the home page here. Um, okay, so also up at the top right, you'll see my file cabinet. This is where you can quickly access any of your work. So your references, your papers, and anything that you've favorited in the Learn tab, um, which I'll show you in just a minute. Um, then if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, <clears throat> you'll see in the very left corner down there is our contact information for my team. Um, so there's a phone number and also an email address, so academicwriter at apa.org. I would recommend the email to be a little faster just to avoid kind of the phone tag situation. We will call back if you have questions or we will um, try to answer, but um, I would recommend email as kind of the best way. So if you have questions about login issues, how to use the writing center, if a feature doesn't seem to be working the way that you think it should, um, please reach out to us and we'll help you out. Um, then also down here at the bottom, you'll see a link to that site help page that I um, just showed you also down there. And then in the bottom right, very bottom corner, um, we have some links to our social media, but I especially like to point out this quick link down here to our style blog. So um, if you have been using APA style for a while, if you're pretty familiar, um, APA maintains this blog and they have for years. Um, I am not an APA style expert. <laughs> um, I am a librarian, so I used to teach APA style a lot. Um, so that's kind of how I picked up most of my APA style knowledge. Um, <clears throat> but anytime that I have a question, that I used to have a question from a student or something like that, um, and I didn't know the answer, coming to this blog is pretty much, I would say, 
most of the time answers my question. So I would recommend checking out the blog if you um, have not used that before. It's searchable. Um, if you have, you know, that weird reference that you're trying to help a student with, um, it's a good resource here. There's also a nice introduction video on our seventh edition publication manual, which if you haven't heard, is coming out um, just in October. So very soon, we're pretty excited about it. I think it's been about 10 years since there's been a new edition, so um, highly anticipated. Um, and Academic Writer will be updated to, um, to reflect all of the new um, seventh edition guidelines and formatting and everything. So it won't happen simultaneously. It will happen next year um, just to make sure that everyone has some time to kind of absorb the information and all of that. So look out for more info on that. Yeah. I know it's a little bit off topic. That's okay. Will you um, be putting out, you know, summaries of the changes? Yeah. So right now there's kind of a preview. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Of I'm going to show you because um, that is a good question. There is kind of a review. Um, if you go to the APA website and go to publications and databases, um, there's kind of an announcement here about the manual. And if you just click on that, there is a whole page that kind of highlights um, different the differences. So things like it's going to be in full color with like tabbed sections. Um, it's going to be more geared towards students, which I'm very excited about. Excited about. Um, the manual as it is now doesn't really address student um, formatting issues. Um, there's also, <laughs> but what did you notice? The, the oh, the punctuation. Yeah. That has yeah. been kind of a big like uproar, <laughs> I know. Um, but yeah, so they've kind of actually um, taken a position that there's, there should be one space. <laughs> See, the one thing I wanted. What's that? The singular The they. singular they. The That's singular great. They. That's also another new update. Um, so bias free language and also many, many more um, reference examples and sample tables and figures. So I haven't seen the whole book yet. <laughs> Hopefully I will soon, but um, you know, we're excited. I'm excited to see all the new changes. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so let me come back. Talked about the blog. Okay, so that's kind of some, just some extra information if you're looking for training materials, um, looking for a link for the blog, things like that. So now I'm just going to jump in <clears throat> and walk us through each center. So I'm going to start here with the Learn Center and talk about the resources that are available in here. Um, so these are our, I like to think of this as like a digital learning library for APA style, but not just APA style, also just the writing and research process. Um, so in here we have different learning objects. So first we have our quick eyes and tutorials. Those are your videos. So these are videos to watch to learn about learning um, APA style and writing. Um, <clears throat> then we have our quick or solve quizzes here and then many samples. So let me go in and kind of show you what each of these are. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so first we have our quick guides. I just clicked into that and you can see each um, type of learning object across the top here in tabs. And also along with the tabs, it tells you how many um, is in each. So we have 66 quick guides. So these are videos. They're short kind of quick reference videos. These are going to be more specific to APA style. Um, so different topics in here are going to be like, uh, let's see, we have a basic setup. So this is one that I like to point out, especially helpful for um, those who might be very new to APA style, maybe they're new in school or they've been out for a while, they've never written a paper in APA style, that's a good one to direct them to, to um, kind of just get a quick overview of 
what you need to do for APA style. <clears throat> um, up here at the top, I also like to point out that you can browse by topic, kind of helps to organize each section here. <clears throat> so there's a whole section on citing sources. So um, I always found that my students had most questions about citing and how to format citations. So there's some really helpful videos here. Um, there's one on direct quotations um, and paraphrasing, which gives a nice explanation. Um, so yeah, so there's citing sources. We also have a whole section on formatting. So there's that basic setup that I mentioned, um, explanation of heading levels, uh, title page, running head, all of those things. And then also reference lists. So there's several different videos that explain how to write a reference for each of these different types of sources. Okay, so if I just choose one of these, I'll do the citing references. Um, when you click the show details next to it, some helpful information about the video will show up on the right side. Uh, so this green star up here, <coughs> excuse me, this is how you add things or remove them from your favorites collection. Um, so if I click the green star to make it solid, this will add it to my favorites, which will show up um, at the end here. So if you just want to save something to refer back to it later on, <clears throat> you can add it to your favorites. Um, okay. <clears throat> also down below here, there is a transcript available. So um, this is just uh, a full transcript of what is explained in the video. I know a lot of students would use that to kind of take notes. Um, a lot of students that might use English as an additional language might use that to help them with the video. Um, so then once I click on the actual video there, I'll just show you kind of how these look. Um, you can jump through slides to different sections if I click the tiles down here. Um, also, I can just advance through the slides here with, oh, we have our sound, um, using the arrows. So very clear, I think very um, easy to follow videos. And the quick guides aren't too intimidating because they're just about three to three, four minutes long. Can any of this be downloaded, like the transcripts? Um, the transcripts, I believe, are in... I believe you can. I think, yes, you can download the transcript. It's in a Word document. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so those are our quick guides. I'm going to jump over next to our tutorials. So these are, this is the second type of video that we have. Um, there's 18 of these. So um, I'll also choose a browse by topic again to show you how these are kind of organized. Um, so we have publishing, research, and writing. Under the writing section, I like to highlight this getting started with APA style. Um, this is also very helpful for students who are brand new to APA style. So tutorials are, um, you're going to see the same video format as the quick guides, but they're going to be longer. So up to about 30 minutes long and cover broader topics, but go into more depth. <clears throat> There's also one on how to avoid plagiarism and self-plagiarism. Um, as a librarian, I would have loved to have this content, especially in instruction. You don't have to spend the time to create your own content to instruct students. You have it right here and it's reliable. Um, we also have a section on research, so different topics in here. Um, how to find reliable sources, <clears throat> things like that. Um, also with the tutorials, I like to point out that these are broken down into sections. So um, if you wanted to assign a tutorial as an assignment to students, you could just assign a specific section if you wanted them to focus on that instead of the whole video, which is a, um, you know, a bit longer. But you could also have them watch the whole video. Um, and then I also like to mention that all of these learning objects can be integrated with your um, LMS. I think you have Canvas, is that right? So um, I think that you have the LTI integration set up. 
If you are interested in learning more about how to um, get this content integrated into your courses, uh, my colleague Lewis is going to do the next presentation and he's going to talk about using the content with Canvas. And we have some documentation to walk you through those steps that I can pass out. And he'll also show you how that works. So if you have time, want to stick around, but I'm sure I'm sure we'll record that as well. Okay, great. Okay, let me keep moving here so I have time to show you all of our um, resources here. So next over we have self quizzes. There's 10 of these. Um, these are intended to be uh, self assessment. So they're not really gradable. They don't um, integrate with the with your grade books, things like that. Um, I know some instructors will have it be kind of an honor system if they want to assign these for credit, you can like screenshot the last page of the quiz. Um, but as they are right now, they're not um, you know, gradable. So, but different topics here, we have APA style basics, citing sources, mechanics of style, references. Um, and if you click on the show details, you'll see information on the right side. Um, under the description, it will refer you to either a quick guide or a tutorial or a list of them that you should watch or review before actually taking the quiz here. So for this one, I should watch the getting started with APA style tutorial before I come take my quiz. So you cannot mm -hmm. take a quiz unless you're... You can. I would just, you know, if you want to review the information first, it tells you which, um, which corresponds with the quiz. Um, and then the way the quizzes work, you get two tries um, to answer the questions. On the first try, if you get it wrong, it will say, it will say no, that's incorrect. Here, I'll show you the quiz here. Okay, this is our APA style basics. So I'll take my first answer. So sorry, incorrect. And then I have the option to try again and submit. And then it'll tell me, sorry, that's not correct again. And then at that point, I can see the answer. So it will show me all the correct um, selections and then it will give me kind of a nice explanation in that green box there. So helpful to assess, you know, your own knowledge. Okay, so next, um, after our videos and quizzes, we have all of our samples. So we have sample papers first off. There are 17 of these. They've been very, you know, thoroughly reviewed, scrubbed by our APA style experts. So very reliable um, examples to use. These you can also browse by topic, which is kind of my preferred, um, so that you can see the actual types of papers represented. So if, um, and these are, all these types of papers are described in the APA um, publication manual. So if you had, say, a literature review, you can come here to that topic and choose the paper you can access a full PDF um, when you click on that, you can download it. And these are great just for, you know, our visual learners who need to actually see how should everything look in, on my page before I actually jump in and try to do it myself. So I would find these super helpful as a student. <clears throat> okay, so after papers, we have our sample references. Um, so these you can also choose to browse by topic. Um, also in the top left corner, you might have noticed this, you can choose a list view or a grid view. The grid view is just going to show everything on the page so that I can just scroll right through. Um, so there's 152 of these references. Um, also everything in the Learning Center is searchable in that top right um, search box. So say I was just looking for a reference example for um, an article. I can search that there. It will adjust across all tabs. Um, so I can see, you know, what my search results are in the quick guides as well or tutorials. Um, but otherwise it's going to show me, so say I was looking for a journal article with DOI. Here's my reference example. So I can use that um, kind of as a template to follow along. 
And you can add these to your favorites as well. Okay, and then to kind of clear out that search, you can just click on show all items. <coughs> all right, um, so then in our samples, we also have tables. There's eight of these. So if students are using tables to present their information in a paper, they can use these since APA style is quite specific with the formatting of um, tables. So different types of tables presented here. And then we have sample figures. So bar graph charts, um, images, photographs, things like that. This is how you would format those in your paper. Okay, and then very last tab here, we have our favorite. So anything I've clicked that green star next to. So a lot of content for learning about writing and APA style, hopefully um, you all would find it as helpful as I have. Um, any questions about the Learning Center before I move on to talk about references? Everybody's favorite. Okay, cool. I will just keep moving along then. So we have um, our reference center, the dark green tab. So when you come in here, you can first go to my references or add new references. <clears throat> so if I click on go to my references, um, essentially academic writer is not an, an like advanced reference manager like RefWorks or EndNote or something like that, but you can store your references in here so that when you are working on a paper, you can very easily add those references to your paper. So mm -hmm. when I'm adding my references, mm -hmm. I have to make sure that the right one goes here. I will show you that in one second. So first we have our, I went to my references. This is my full reference library. So all of the references that I've added into Academic Reader are gonna show up in this whole list. Um, so there are a few ways if you are um, looking for something specific, um, you can come up here to use the sort. So you can sort this full list by author, date, title, reference type, or date added. And you can also use the search box up here. So if I were to, um, you'll notice to the right of my reference, there is a note section. So if I put a note in there, that will become searchable in that box. So essentially you can tag references like with a paper or a class. It kind of really helps you to find what you're looking for. Especially, you know, if you have tons and tons of references, this list will get pretty long um, and it might be challenging to find a specific reference, but you can use that search box up there. Okay. So you so, can't really though add folders. Right. You would just keynote your Right. As it is right now, um, we don't have a method of like folders. Mm -hmm. I wish we did. I think it's something that our product people, we care about it all the time from our users. Um, and so, Something I think to look for in the future, but we're just not quite, not quite there yet. Okay, so then let me go back to Reference Center and I'll show you how to add references so that you can build up that list. So you just want to click on Add References. There's three main ways that you can add your references. You can create them. Um, from scratch, essentially, using our forms developed by our APA style experts. You can import them from other sources, so say a reference manager or a database. And then you can also use our search feature, which I'll explain. So first off with the create option, um, these we like to think of as kind of the best learning opportunity, especially for students. Um, because it will kind of walk you through step by step every section of your reference. So first thing that the user needs to do is actually determine what type of source they have that they need to write a reference for. Um, I just, I'll choose journal article. Um, these are all kind of organized. Um, I think 
pretty well. We have like a section of audio visual. Um, we have dissertations, a whole section of books. But I do find that that can be a challenge for the students actually knowing what their type of reference, what their type of source is. Um, but once you do determine that, you just want to select your form. So um, the create option walks you through a form kind of step by step, but you'll see there's a lot of help um, specific for APA style all along the way. So um, it kind of takes you section by section. So first we have our author section. Um, it will tell me exactly what I need to put in each box. If I was unsure at any point, these little question marks here, if I click that, um, you'll see some guided information here. This comes from, you know, the APA publication manual. You'll see an example in the top right. And then also down here below, it's going to refer me to something in the Learning Center. So if I need to learn more, um, if I'm still not quite sure about what should go in this reference um, form, I can watch this video and learn some more. Okay, then also it will take me to the date. It will take me to my title. Um, up here in the top right, there's a collapse feature so that I can kind of, I mean, this is a lot of information to enter, so it doesn't look quite so overwhelming. You can collapse it and take it section by section. I mean, really, if you're, a, mm -hmm. if you're familiar with APA style, it's mm -hmm. probably just best to import those, isn't it, rather than jump through all these It might be if you, um, if you're doing your, you know, your research in databases, and I'll show you the importing feature, Good. but absolutely it might be the fastest option for you. Um, this is really for if you have a reference that you can't import, or if you want to assign your students to do this as a learning activity, that's kind of um, what they're here for. So when you, mm -hmm. when you do use the import There is, yeah, there are some tools to do that. I'll show you. Um, okay, so with this form, also, I just wanna scroll down to the bottom to show you this other feature. You can save your quotations directly in with your reference so that you have it saved with the reference. So when you go to cite um, a quotation in your paper, it's there and you can quickly format that citation. So kind of a unique thing, I think. So then once you add to my references, it will take all of that information, format the reference, and put it into your reference, my reference list. Okay, so now, now let me go over to the importing and explain how this works. Because I would say likely most students will use this over creating them from scratch. So the importing, um, uses what's called an RIS file. Um, this type of file, it looks just like a, like a notepad, um, plain text document. Um, it just allows different programs to communicate citation information. And it's very standard for databases, reference managers. So if you um, choose like an export option, you'll see that RIS file linked with the reference. So say I was using um, a database to do my research. Um, let's say it was an EBSCO host database. Um, from that database, along with my reference, I need to choose the export option, export RIS file. It will send that RIS file. I can save it you know, on a folder on my computer. So then at that point, I just come here to upload that file here and then it will import the reference for me. You can do multiple at a time. You don't have to do this one by one, which would be a bit tedious. Um, but to do that, most um, databases will have you add references to a folder, and then you can export everything together. Is that gonna make sense? So yeah. if, the, if there's an error in the record, will help them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we know that Actually, a lot of databases, even though they're very reputable databases, there are mistakes. And a lot of this is because maybe a publisher has like a specific 
their own guideline for APA style. You'll see like weird capitalization, things like that. So academic writer is not going to make changes to any of the data in the reference, but it will alert you if something seems off, seems wrong. So once you import that, um, you'll hit submit. And um, at that point, it will alert you with this bright red exclamation mark. Um, if there's verification needed. So it's still the, the student or the user has that authority, that responsibility to go back and double check their references for errors like this. So some things to look out for would be missing information. So maybe a, the date section was blank or um, a section was blank. And then also look out for first and middle names um, sometimes it might put like the, the first and middle name, or excuse me, the first and last name like in the last name box. So you'd have to come back to your, um, to your form and edit that to make sure that it's correct. And then also capitalization is a, a big one. So do I remind students, so hmm, that's okay. Um, maybe I missed this, but so if I'm researching and um, like I just, my workflow is usually just data to ask me to do mm -hmm. research. So I can't upload a Word document? You cannot upload a Word document, correct. Um, and that's because the way that the references work, it's not, they all are put into that form. So every reference that you add, it creates that form for them so that it can format that into your paper. And then you can, also take that reference and it will format the citation for you. So the Word document you cannot upload because um, it doesn't really communicate with that content, if that makes sense. You will be able to download your paper at the end as a Word document, but the references have to be entered into the uh, form format. Yes. Oh, yeah, wait, sorry. Um, That's okay. Okay. I was just going to make a note too that yeah. we've been teaching a lot of our students how to use Zotero as a free management okay. uh, man, uh, reference management program. And I did notice that mm -hmm. on the uh, pre importing feature that Zotero is an option. Yes. So if you had something saved in Zotero, if you had your reference saved in Zotero, you can import, you can it, import it from or in a way. Or, yeah. Yep. Okay. You sure can. So it is kind of a a process to get used to, I think. There's a little learning curve. Um, most students, I think, probably won't recognize an RAS style or what that is, but once you have done this a few times, you'll see it's pretty, it's pretty simple and you get the hang of it. You know, you just, it's still easier, I think, than creating them from scratch. Well, it just so, adds a step to the workflow. Yeah. So you, you yeah. Know that on the front yeah. So I know a lot of students also will still use like RefWorks to, to manage their references more and then um, they can pull them straight in from RefWorks or, or Zotero. Yeah, see my Zotero account's full. That's one of the reasons I'm interested in Oh this. yeah, yeah. And, and so, um, but I can use my other stuff. Which is just yes. How much it has to be doing that in this? There's, there's um, not a limit that I know of. I haven't heard of anyone reaching Eliminate yet. So, yeah. Okay. Any other questions about adding references? Do you have one more option here? Um, this is kind of unique in that the search option here. Um, if you use PsychInfo, um, if your students use PsychInfo, they can pull references straight from PsychInfo. So PsychInfo is an APA database. Um, so for as a convenience, you know, since we're APA, you can pull references in using the search option. So um, let me explain just a little bit. It's not like access to the full database. It's not intended to be a discovery. Like you wouldn't come here to do your research in PsychInfo. You would have known, kind of a known item search. So if you know that you did your research in PsychInfo and that's where your references are, you can come here, um, have your author name, title, you can search here. Um, so let me see, I like to search my, 
name because I have some family members with some published um, content. So you just search your author's name and then you can just select the, um, the reference. So these are all formatted in APA style already and you can just click add to my references and it will add to your reference collection. So very simple. They're already formatted and you can just add them in pretty easily. Okay. All right, so with the time left, I kind of, I'm a little short on time, but I want to go through the Writing Center. Um, sorry if I talk kind of fast. I like, there's so many things to show you. So um, first off, I'll show you how to start a brand new paper. So you just want to come here to the Writing Center, click on Write a New Paper. First, you'll select a template. So these templates, the way these work, it's essentially just setting up your headings and your heading levels um, based on what type of paper you have here. So also along with these templates, you can view a sample paper. Um, and then down here at the bottom, there is a basic paper, which is going to be blank. It doesn't have headings set for you, um, but that will be compatible with any APA style paper. It is the most popular paper that I think students use. So they can just um, put in their headings how they need to. Uh, but let me choose this multi-experiment. First, it's gonna ask me how I plan to use the paper, um, student assignment or professional manuscript. These are just a little different. The student assignment's not gonna include certain things that would be required for submitting for publication. So like an author note, abstract, and keywords. Um, if you do want students to say write an abstract along with a um, paper or annotate a bibliography, whatever, they will be able to add an abstract in. So they're not locked into that. So I'll hit submit. Next thing I just need is a title. Um, you can make edits to this title at any time. You can also right away start adding references to the paper. Otherwise, you can just click on start writing. And now it'll take me to, this is just asking me if I need some help, um, my full paper editor here. So you can see this is my multi-experiment. This, the way the template is set up, it has um, heading levels preset for me and it also has some guidance information. So what should typically go in each section. And then once I click on a section to work on it, that text will go away. Um, so I don't have to worry about it interfering. But that text is also available if you go to the top right for this help section. So this top right um, question mark, um, all of that text that shows up in the paper is also represented here on the side. Mm -hmm. you can add that information. What about deleting information like I don't want study one? Yeah, so let me show you how the headings work. So I have my headings set here. If I want to change or delete one, all I have to do is highlight my heading. So these show up like as a section throughout my paper. You can see they're on the left side. It kind of creates a outline as I add different sections. So if I wanna change this, highlight it, come up to this headings dropdown. Um, you can see it represents APA style, how each heading level should be formatted, um, you know, whether it's bold, indented, um, et cetera. If I want to remove a heading level, I would just click this remove option at the bottom. If I wanna change it, so say I wanted to make this a heading level three, for an example, I just click that option and it will automatically format that for me. And it will also represent the changes in the outline there on the left side, okay? So pretty simple to format your heading levels. Yeah. So can you remove it, will it go away in the left? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if I were to take out, whoops, that same heading, remove, and then it will just kind of clear out the for behind the scenes formatting and just look like plain text. And I can delete it if I need to. Yeah. So I saw the remove. 
Mm -hmm. I saw the way the text can be uh, formatted, but mm -hmm. I did not see an edit. Like if I wanted discussion and results. Um. So you mean like with the headings to just to edit. edit it? Then you can just type it here in the paper editor. So say if I wanted to change the name of this, whoops, whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh, I got something stuck on there. Keyboard's acting a little funny. There we go. So if I wanted to, um, you can type any heading level that you want. So say I just had heading, I can type it. And then just once I highlight it and set it as a level, it will create that heading level. So I can always come back and change. I can type the heading, whoops, if I want to make edits to it. Okay. Yes. You just change the text in the body. Yep. Okay. All right, so then let me show you. I'm going to go over to a paper that has a little more content in it so I can show you how to um, actually add references to your paper and then cite those references. So let me use this practice paper. Um, so this I just use, this is just a kind of a dummy practice paper that I have here. Um, so if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of your paper below, you'll see where all of this, you can add additional elements. So we have site references, you can um, add tables, figures, footnotes, appendices um, there in this bottom page. So these right here are all of the references that I've already added to my paper. You can also see next to it, it'll tell me if a reference has already been cited in the paper. So to add a new reference to this paper, all I need to do is click on add new reference. It's gonna take me to my references. So this is my full reference library right here. And then I just need to select the references that I want to add to the paper. You can do multiple, you can do one at a time, whatever you prefer. So select the references and click add to paper. So you would have already added them into Academic Writer into my references. And now I'm gonna, from that list, add it to my paper. Okay, so I just need to close out of this to return to the body. If I come down below, now I can see those new references that I just added. So those have not yet been cited in my paper. So then when I do want to cite one of my new references, all I need to do is come up here to my paper, um, click on with your cursor exactly where you want that citation to go. Um, and then you can come right down here to your references and select the reference you need to cite and then click the cite button. So at this point, it's gonna ask for a bit of information. So first is it parenthetical or narrative? Um, that's up to the author. And then also, is it a quotation? So I'll say no and show you. Once I click submit, it will create that citation for me. And you'll notice up here in the top right, it does auto save everything about um, every 30 seconds. So that citation that I just dropped, it just dropped it exactly where I told it to. So you might have to adjust the spacing just a bit. You might no notice also it does maintain the, it keeps track of the formatting of the authors for me. So it's entered in an et al. So depending on how many times I have cited this source in my paper, it will keep track of all of that formatting for me, whether to list out all of the authors or use it at all. Okay, and then let me show you. So a quick question. Yeah, sure. I, think I know the answer to this, but just yeah. to make sure. Um, so if a student has been working outside of the environment, they could just do a control A and copy it to paper. 
paper and paste it in. So yes, you can. However, if they have citations in the text, it's not going to recognize those as because it's not going to be linked with the references here as the forms. Does that make sense? So it's not going to take advantage of the formatting help that they would have. They can, if they have a paper and they want to, um, you know, transfer it into Academic Writer, they can copy that text and paste it in. But I would suggest still going back and adding the references and then adding the actual citations. Yeah, of course. Um, so then let me show you the quotation. So if I want to choose um, another one of these and click cite, um, I'll choose parenthetical again. And this time I'll choose, yes, it is a quotation. So I have the option to cite a saved quotation. So if I was, you know, really <laughs> ahead of the game and I had already entered in all of my um, quotations along with my references, I would have it right there and I could just pop it right into my paper. Otherwise, I can cite a new quotation. So I'll need to enter in a page or a paragraph number and then my actual quotation. Oops, I can type. And then once I click submit, it will create that citation for me. This box here is kind of just a, um, a mention to mention that it's essentially created a drop quote. So let's plop that quote right into your paper. Um, the student or the user still has that authority. They have to make sure to, you know, use transition, set up the quote in the paper um, because otherwise instructors are gonna notice that you just use a drop quote. Um, okay, so I think you'll see throughout, um, especially with like the citing and the formatting, these tools are very helpful. It can be time savers, but the, the user still has that authority. They have to understand, you know, where, where and when do I have to cite? How do I know if I'm paraphrasing or using a direct quotation, things like that. And I think that that understanding comes from, you know, learning content from the Learning Center, um, experience with writing. Um, so there are a lot of tools and features to help with the formatting, but it kind of, that will help the student to focus on the real content and the research of the paper. Um, okay, so that's our citing tool. Let me show you any questions about adding references or citing. Okay, I think we have just a few minutes. Um, over on the le left side, there are some check tools available. So these are just to help um, the user check their work. So you can check things like the headings order to make sure that you have all of your headings um, in the correct order. You can check for orphan headings. That would be like a, a, like a dangling heading. So like one heading level without um, additional heading levels underneath it. Also, you can do a reference check. So if I use this check references tool, it will essentially do a scan of my references and alert me if things seem incorrect or if I'm missing information. So that's a very helpful one. And then also match reference citations will make sure that I have cited all of my references that I have on my paper in the paper. So this one, I know I haven't cited them all. So I'll just show you how it works. So it's found one or more references that have not been cited. So then once I go to the paper, it shows me a red flag next to the ones that I need to go back and either delete or cite in the paper. Okay. And then uh, exporting. So once you are finished with the paper, you have a few options for getting it out, getting it ready to turn in or um, whatever you need to do with it. So you have email. You can email it to yourself or multiple people. It will email in a Word document. So when you send that, it will be a Word. Then you can also download and you can choose to download in Word or PDF. And you can also just export um, 
the references if you want to do that. Okay, questions at all? So what is the collaboration? Oh, we're going to show that. Collaboration. Thank you. So this is so that you can work on essentially group projects to get together, group paper. So multiple people can contribute to a paper at the, sa at the same time. So the way this works, it's a little different from something like um, Google Docs. Everyone kind of takes ownership of a section. So the person who creates the paper, starts the paper, they're kind of the group leader and they will add people to the paper. So they would add the group members. So you can add a new user. Um, you can assign them a role. They can be either a collaborator or a reviewer. The collaborator can actually make edits to the paper and view the paper. The reviewer can only make comments. So they can view a paper and then on the right side, they can um, add comment bubbles, basically. Um, so they do have to be an academic writer user. Um, so that you would just send an email, they would get a notification that they've been added to a paper. So then um, after you add users, you can assign them a section. So <clears throat> everyone really has ownership of a section in the collaboration. And that's so that you're not like working over or deleting someone else's work. So I assigned this method section to my colleague Dawn. Um, as the group leader, I would have the option to also revoke the section if they're not, you know, pulling their weight in the assignment. Um, but then let me show you in the paper. Oops. If I scroll. Um, down, sorry, let me find this. I'll show you how you can actually tell who's doing what. So you see that section methods, this is the one I assigned to Dawn. It's kind of grayed out. So I know that I can't work on that right now. So if I even try to type on it, it won't let me. And then also on the left side in the outline, you'll see that method section has a red dot next to it. So I know someone else is, has ownership of that right now in the collaboration. Um, something else I forgot to mention was the title page. So the title page, um, you don't like free write it like you do in Microsoft Word. You're going to use a form here to create that. So you would enter in, um, you'd already have the title entered in the running head right here. Um, it's going to format that whole running head for you. So all you do is type in your shortened title enter in um, this other information like a date, professor, save. The next page is where you would enter in the author information. So I already entered myself there. You can see on the right side, you can add multiple of them and they will show up on the right side. So then once I have all of my title page information in, if I click on preview, I'll show you how see how it's automatically set that running head on the first page with the page number and then if i go to the next page it's formatted that um shortened title and then it also keeps maintains the page numbers for me so there's my paper and i'll go all the way to the end and show you how all of my references look and i think most of these references i've either imported or use that psych info um, search option. So I have them all perfectly formatted in APA style. Any other questions? So the collaboration yeah. can be done only in sections? What if everybody has how much time to edit here? So, well, it doesn't work to do that in here. And I think that is just to um avoid people deleting each other's work but you can um use the collaboration and then you can always export it um so at the end of a collaboration when you decide everyone is done with the paper you can use this complete and distribute and then it will essentially remove 
the collaborators and reviewers and send a copy of the paper. And then at that point, if you wanted to come together as a group and kind of review things together, you could. But yeah, it doesn't let you just have open access to the whole paper. It's a little, it's a little different for, I think, for collaboration tools. What other questions? What did I forget to mention? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, we do have a student session later. Um, I probably would, when I present this, I would spend more time in the writing. I'll show them the Learning Center. I like to spend a little more time on the Learning Center with faculty so that you know the content that you have um, available to you. But I will spend more time helping students really understand how to add their references and how to use the features in the writing center. Yeah. I hope this was helpful. <laughs> I know it's a lot of information. It's a lot. There's so much you can do with it. Sometimes it's like a challenge to, you know, learn it all and then use this. It's a big transition to go from we're also used to using like Upwork to write papers and then come into this new tool. But I think especially if you're using APA styles, um, it can be a good time saver, especially with all the formatting things. So, yeah. It sounds like a tool where you can learn a lot about APA, but it also sounds like you can know, write a paper in APA style mm -hmm. that you can do away with learning. It's really the instruction from scratch. That's what I, I think that's what it's intended to do. Yeah, for sure. Like you can work with it. Um, you can, if you have a paper already started in Word, yes, you can paste that text in there. I would, it will ask you to paste in plain text, which I absolutely would recommend that you do because otherwise there, you know, even in Microsoft Word, there's weird formatting things that happen behind the scenes and those can conflict with our formatting. So just make sure to paste it as um, plain text and it will ask you, it will give you that option. Great. 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 You're so welcome. You're so welcome. If you do think of questions, um, you can send emails to that academic writer that's at the very bottom of every page. They'll come basically straight to me. So you can also say, hi, Emily. Like, How's it going? So I'll see those and I'll answer them. And I think some of those will also be here to let the group be able to answer that. Okay, great. So. Yeah. So we'll talk more about LPI and how you can use these in your courses. Um, Lewis has a lot of knowledge about um, LCI integration and all that. So we'll right. have some helpful information for you. Yeah. You're so welcome. Put yourself to some uh, highlighters, yes. goodies back there. But thank you so much for coming. I think I can stop this recording. Yeah. <laughs>